Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. You get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular <laughs> dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. £850. You're joking. Well, actually, I was quite serious. If I don't think that's enough money, the offer, I'm going to say refuse that. Live dangerously. Have a gamble. Go to auction. We might just get you a few more quid there. Make no mistake, we're about to sell. Today, the show comes to you from Mansfield. Wow, look at this crowd. They've been here since early this morning. They're determined to do business today. They want cash in their pockets or they want to gamble at auction. But you know why they're here. They want the real deal. First up, it's Helen Gardner with a name we're all familiar with. On my table, there's an iconic little Moorcroft pot, which is quite pretty, quite like it, always very saleable. Bought it about 27 years. I think it's worth about probably about £120. I wonder if Helen has the same figure in mind, or Now, tell me, you've brought in this iconic little Moorcroft powder bowl. Very pretty. Now, how long have you had this done? Uh, about 27 years. You must like it, then. I do. Um, I don't use it. I've never used it as a powder bowl. And it just sits on my dressing table. Well, I rather like it. It's got a very nice orchid on the front here. And this looks like freesias round about. I would say it's probably about 1940s. And where did you get it? I actually had it given to me. Um, Lucky you. About 27 years ago. And I just wanted a pot to put on my mm -hmm, coffee table. Mm -hmm. And it's been sat on my coffee table, even when my children were growing up, and they used to play with it. Oh, no. Well, lucky it um, survived. Yeah. Because it does seem to be in first-class condition. Well, how much money do you want for it, Dawn? Well, that's... Have you got an it, idea? I have, uh, but that's for you to tell me. Oh, I see. Mmm, no. How much do I want to buy it? <laughs> OK, well, I'll put some money on the table. OK. A lot of money or a little bit of money? We'll see. <laughs> You're giving nothing away, no. Don. There we go, it's a nice Scottish 20. 20. 40 pounds. No, it's a very definite no. It is. Do you want a lot more than that? A bit more. A bit more. How about if I make it 50 pounds? How do you feel about that, Don? No. No? Very definite no. Well, yes, I'm, David. Well, Don, I'm glad you said no, because Moorcroft, as we all know, is very desirable, it's very collectible. The independent value is they place their valuation at 1 to 120, 100 to 150. I'm going to say at 50 pounds, it's a little bit on the low side. So perhaps if you got up towards the 100 pounds, around that figure, if not, I think that's a good gamble at auction because we all know that Moorcroft is very desirable in the auction room. This is going to cost me money, isn't it, Don? <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> David's advice is always very good. Yes. If I take this £10 away and put another 20 down, so that's 60 how about £70? How do you feel about that? No. A little bit more. A little bit more. How about £75? No. Mm -hmm. Well, that's my last bid. I'm going to go to £80. That's my very last bid. What do you say? Deal. Got a deal? Yes. Well done, Don. I do like it, and thank you for taking care of it so well. Well, I like the little Norcroft pot. I'm quite pleased with it. £80 maximum that I wanted to pay. I'd have to make a lot more than £120 to get £80 back at auction, so I'm quite happy with the deal. Now we're all warmed up, it's over to Alison Chapman and Arthur's elegant Victorian heater. And it seems the temperature might be rising. I've seen her on, on the television quite a lot, like, you know, and as long as she can keep getting around down about half of the money, I'm all right. <laughs> Let's see if I do. So, this is your conservatory heater? Yes, it, it was. Yeah, when did yeah. you stop using it? Oh, and we've never used it since we moved, and it's about six years ago. 
And what age would you think this was? It's Victorian. And, uh, it's, uh, so let's say, for argument's sake, 1890? Yeah, it's probably that, yes. And you stopped using it six years ago? Six years ago, yeah. Wonderful, isn't it? And doesn't it look beautiful? It does, yes, very, very nice, actually. Well, what we've got here is it's cast iron, it's been stove enamelled, and I love it. Yeah. It will have um, glass behind here, which we have in the box, although I have noticed that some of it's damaged. Yes, there's one piece of glass broken, but... Yeah. And if I lift the door, we can see the heating mechanism. Yes. With the flue. So, you don't use it anymore then at no, all? No, no, and I've got a radiator now and we can save it. <laughs> <laughs> You've modernised. <laughs> yeah. It probably wouldn't be used now. No. But it is decorative, isn't it? Well, this is it, isn't it? Yes. I mean, they're selling these in the garden centres and they're up in the 300s. 300? Mm -hmm. Not a good figure. Not a good figure, no. Not, Not for, for you. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Right, 50. 70. No way. What you want, the 300 that you can get on the new ones today? No, 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 no I don't want 300, but I'd, I'd like a bit more than that, please. 80. No. Would you like to speak to David? Yes, please, if, you, if he's got the time. Well, it's pretty obvious you've got a very nice example of a conservatory heater. Our experts, they are saying the lowest estimate is 80, the best is 150. A few years ago, that would have fetched close to 200 pounds in the sale room. Today, I still think it's probably worth somewhere around 90 or 100 quid, maybe that kind of money. 80 pounds on the table, cash is king, it's real money, so your call. You want a hundred, don't you? I did, yes. Well, I am a woman of compromise. How about I put down 90 and we meet halfway? Right, yes, thank you. What a deal. Yes. Well done, my darling. Thank you. Thank you very much. If I love it, someone else will. It will sell, I think, straight away. We'll find out later if Alison's confidence pays off. We're with David Ford, but what will he make of this contemporary glass vase? So when I saw it put on the table, I thought, lovely piece of Lurtz. German, wonderful. Then I found out that it was a piece of John Ditchfield. Wonderful glassmaker, living artist, but not for me. I'm looking to get, I don't know, three figures, 120 possibly for it. Stephen, I'm not sure you're going to see eye to eye with David, but once you start wheeling and dealing, who knows? Steve, you oh. brought me in a bit of glass, and when you first look at it, it looks like Lurz, which yeah. is a German glass maker uh, from the 20th, late 19th century. Yeah. But this isn't, is it? This is a comparatively local glass maker, is, yeah. Ditchfield. John Ditchfield, yes. So it's comparatively modern. And did you buy it? I bought it at auction, yes. You bought it at auction? Yeah. And how long ago was that? Six months. So why are you selling it now, you thought? I do auctions every now and again, and I like to buy a little bit and sell a little bit. OK, that's fair. What do you know about John Ditchfield as a glassmaker? North of England, uh, relatively modern. Blackpool, uh, isn't Blackpool, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Blackpool. I mean, it's very decorative, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's almost Art Nouveau in appearance, it, isn't yeah. it? Yes, in a way, yeah. He usually signs it. He does, yes. Yeah, there it is. It's a scratched mark in the bottom. John Ditchfield, and it's dated 1982. Tells us everything we need to know, doesn't it? Yep. Right. Not worth a lot, you know. 1982, it's an early piece. An early piece? It is an early piece, yes. An early piece for John Ditchfield? It is an early piece for John Ditchfield, yes. What's it worth? 20? It's worth more than 20. 40 pounds? It's worth more than 40. Is it? Yes. Did you pay more than 40? I did pay more than 40 for it, yes. Oh, dear. I don't know what the retail price in his studio would right. be for this vase.
probably about fifty pounds. No, no, it's worth more than that. I'll try another one, and I think I'm probably there. Sixty pounds for your. Are you are you showing a profit? No, no. Oh dear, I don't think I want to pay much more than that. I mean, just just for fun of it, I'll try another five or sixty-five. But I think that's as far as that's where I'm at. That's as far as I want to go. I'm going to take it to auction then. Have another gamble. Put it am, back yes. in the rooms and yep. hopefully get some more money. I, I wish you well, Steve. Good Thank luck. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank nice you. meeting you. Could have done with some more money, to be quite honest. So I think I'm going to go to auction and see if I can uh, get roughly what I uh, what I want for it. So has Stephen made the right call? Find out after the break. Also coming up, has Alison lost the plot? Do you think you should come home with me? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Mansfield in Nottinghamshire. A few moments ago, we saw Stephen turn down David's £65 offer for his Ditchfield glass vase. Yeah, I'm going to stick at 65 so... I'm going to take it to auction, then. Thank you. Will it capture the bidder's attention in the auction? It's over to the Duke and auctioneer Stephen Iredale. Your bid, sir. Now, on the dealer's day, you brought in a bit of art glass, but fairly modern, made by John Ditchfield. What did you pay for it? Fifty pounds. Fifty quid. I think you got a good bargain there. Now, it says here you're a bit of a wheeler dealer, so you buy and sell, do you? A little bit, yeah. OK. Now, you've got a reserve of eighty pounds on it. You need to get more than eighty, because the time you take commission off, you're not going to be much better off than David Ford's offer. No. OK. Let's see what happens. Always very flexible, sell a great deal of it. Bids here, as always, at £95, 100 do I see? 95 Getting the idea of this wheel of dealing, isn't he? <laughs> do you want to beat that in the room first? 110 in the room, 120 on the net. At 110, 120, one more on the net. 120 new plates before them. 130, 130, 140, 150. At 140 bid. 150 on the net, 150 bid. It's on the internet at £150, 160 for you, 160 nodding, 170. Don't give up on the internet. Good price. 180, 190, 190, 200. At 190 pounds, internet winning the battle at 190. All done then at 190. On the net at 190. So 190 pounds. I make that about 156 pounds or thereabouts. Are you surprised or are you thinking to yourself, I always thought it would bring money? I'm a little surprised, but I'm glad it's made that. OK. Yeah. What are you going to do with the money? I've spent it already today. See, that's what happens in this business. They can't keep the money in their hands. That's what it's all about. But this today is the real deal, 156 quid. So Stephen's gamble paid off. The vase made over twice what David Ford offered. And now we're heading back to the den. Will Joe Brayshaw contain herself when she sees this little charmer? Got a nice little continental enamel box next. Got little niggles on it, but it's nice. I don't know what it's worth, but it's nice. How do you come to have a little box um, like this? My brother gave it to my mum um, to bring with us. He's had it just lying around and just thought we were coming here and he gave it to us to bring. And how did brother acquire it? I think he was given to him about ten years ago. Um, it's a little continental enamel box. It's in very nice condition. It does have some niggles around this bottom edge. It's got these lovely scenes on it. Got these musicians on the on the cover. And then inside a sort of rural scene of bands. And then the, the nicest one is the one in the bottom, isn't yeah. it? Underneath the grapevine. How much is it? You tell me. I really don't know. But we'll have a blast and see what happens and see how we go. Start with £100. No, I think it's worth a bit more. I think, so you have an idea what it's worth then? I wish you'd enlighten me because I don't. <laughs> 150. Any, any more? I'm a bit adrift with this, I really don't know. So. Here comes David, and perhaps he'll enlighten me as well. Well, 
I've had a look at this. It is beautiful. This is either late 18th century or early 19th. It could be French, it could be Limoges, it could also be Swiss. It is absolutely fabulous. Now, the estimation is three to four hundred pounds, and I have a feeling that even that might be on the low side. Now, don't get too excited because you could go to the sale and it could just fall very flat. But I certainly think the three to four is a realistic estimation. And I'm going to say, Joe, if you want to buy it, we need a fair bit more money on the table. Yep. Point made. Start again. 200. 300 pounds. Now you've got to think. I bet you make profit a little well, bit Well, there's more. no point in me buying it if I don't make a profit. It's a little bit more. No, nope. I'm sticking with my 300. So the decision now is completely with you. I think we'll have a deal. We're having a deal? We're having a deal, yeah. Well done. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks for bringing it in. Are you on commission? I am. <laughs> I think I did a good deal. I got £300 for my brother. Brilliant. I actually can't wait to get home with it to find out a bit more about it. People are still pouring through the door, each one hoping our experts will take a fancy to their treasure possessions. And Alison's gone a little crazy for Dennis's childhood friend. It's a teddy. He loves a tickle on his tummy, doesn't he, teddy? Yes, he does. I've had it since I'm a little boy, and I'm parting with it. It's time to go. And is this gorgeous gentleman your teddy? Yeah. What, actually yours from when you were little? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And you've had him for how long? About 57 years. 57 years. I think he's charming. He's a lovely size. So why are you parting with him? Just. Time to go, time for us to part, I think. <laughs> it's been put away for years. Just put away. Never never come out like. And how do you feel about that, Ted? Being in a cupboard, never seeing the light of day. I think he's depressed. Do you see how his head's hung yeah. low? Wouldn't you say he looks a bit depressed about <laughs> being in a cupboard? I think he is. So I think we need to find you a good home, a friendly, happy home. All right, then, how much do you want for him? Loads. Loads? <laughs> loads. How yeah. much is loads? I'd like, I'd like over 100. Over 100. OK, let's see where we go, Dennis. I see our charming, somewhat depressed Teddy at 50, 70 pounds. A lot more. No label. It's his size, isn't it, yeah, really? Yeah. He's a big boy. Big book is. Yeah. 80 quid. Come on, it's a good, good deal. If you went to auction... Yeah, I know. It would be an experience, though. Is that what you'd like to do, I go don't... to auction? Yeah, I think I would. OK, I is, I would. That is that your you final? Expect... Well, it might not be my final. It all depends on how much more, then. 90 pounds. If you got a hundred at auction, you wouldn't be left with ninety pounds. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Do you think you should come home with me? Funny enough, he says yes. Mm. What do you think, Dennis? I think another tenner. <sighs> well, I can't, I can't leave him with you to be shoved in a cupboard, to be neglected. No. So, you've won the day. A hundred pounds, and can I have your teddy? You can. I'm rehoming him. Yep. We've got a deal. Thank you very much, Thanks darling. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are you pleased to be coming home with me? Yes. Mm, we'll take your word for it, Alison. Coming up, has Eric got his head in the clouds? How much do you want for it, really? Well, as much as I can get, really. Oh, yeah, I know. Come on, let's be realistic. You're not going to get three million quid for it, are you? Tell it how it is, Joe. So how much do you really want for it? In, back down here on planet Earth. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. 
The team are in Mansfield in Nottinghamshire today, and as the collectibles continue to flood in, there's a sniff of something special in the air. I brought in what I believe is an old apothecary box. I'm not really very sure of the value. This looks like an interesting apothecary box, not in best condition, but we'll see. Depends how much I really want to buy it. And David and auctioneer Stephen Iredell are keen to keep an eye on this deal. Well, nice to meet you. Well, this is a very interesting object. So, what can you tell me about this box before I open it? Right, well, I didn't know a lot about it. I wasn't quite sure what it was, but I do believe it's an old apothecary box. I inherited it about five years ago and I haven't really looked at it properly until recently. Let's look at it now. OK. <laughs> I'm going to take the lid off because the hinges are gone on yes, the back. Yes, yes. So it's got all the bottles and, as you rightly say, it's an apothecary box. Yes. And, interestingly enough, in here, take out the safety pin, got a little drawer with all the apothecaries look. Yes. Isn't and that interesting? Yeah. And I believe there's a secret drawer in there Another as well. drawer in the side. Yes. And we take this off. Oh, and it's got the little scales in there. And then there. we have... How scales. interesting, yes, because the little weights are there. That's right, yeah. Nice that they're still intact. Yeah. That's a rather nice thing. I like that. This would have been used, the apothecaries. Now, can you imagine what, like, a doctor, what he had in these days? This dates to about 1830, 1820. Okay. To me, this looks as though it's been on a campaign. I think this would have been taken to a war. Really? I do. I think this is the handles are telling me that. Yes. This would have been carrying. Yes. This would have been used. Probably a surgeon, you know, would have taken it right. with the apothecaries. Mm. That's really interesting. I, I really feel that this has been to the wars. Yes. Stephen, looking at one of these takes me back. I've bought and sold many of these over the years. Looking at this one, the box tends to make me think that this is Anglo-Indian, probably produced somewhere in India around about the 1840s or 50s. Now, does it ring a bell with you? Yeah, I, I agree with the date completely. And those flush handles are something you often get on furniture that's made to travel, campaign furniture, things that would have travelled with the army and in the days of the empire, yep. um, something which was in great demand. It's had a bit of damage, it's lost its hinges. Yeah. I'm sure that's not too difficult. The box itself, once cleaned up, I think it could look really exciting. It's the conditions a little bit of an element here. As it is, I've said 250, 350, something yeah. like that. I think that's probably where it should be. Let's see what the wee Helen has to say about it. Let's see what she puts on the table. So, how much do you want for it, Val? Well, let's see what you've got to offer. £50, £100. No? No. <laughs> you sure? I'm certain. You're very positive. <laughs> very positive. £150. I'm in nowhere close. Not yet. £200. Is that tempting you, Val? Not really. Not really? <laughs> I've just come in at this important moment now, I think, because when you arrived today, you weren't sure you had anything of real value here at all. That's right. It's mm -hmm. basically all there. The bottles are there. The only thing I would say is I like to see them a little bit more grubby in the sense I like to see the contents in the bottles. I like to see the written labels on the bottles. The independent values on the auctioneer, they're still quite keen at 250 to 350. So at the moment, 200 pounds. I think he's on the low side. Right. I've seen them bring a lot more, but this does need a certain amount of work doing to it. If you thought between the 250 to 350, that's where I think the real price lies. I'll maybe have one last shot at it. I think there's quite a lot of restoration needing done in this box. But I do like the box. I'll give it one last shot. Okay. And then you'll have to decide. 220. 240, 260. Now, I think that's not a bad offer. Is that your final offer? I think that's going to be my absolute final offer. That's £260 cash on the table. I think 
I think I'll take it to auction. Well, I think you have a nice day out. I think it's a good decision. Someone who's more of a specialist might be able to offer yes. more. I hope it does really well for you. I quite like that apothecary box. Maybe I should have offered a little bit more. 260s, a reasonable offer. Really like the apothecary chest. It's been in the wars a little bit. It's a little bit worn. 260 wasn't a bad offer, really, on the face of it in cash on the day. But it's a nice thing, and fingers crossed we'll do our best with it. Let's keep our toes crossed as well, Stephen. Now, over to David in the auction room. You sat down with Helen Gordon and she offered you £260. Now, you turned that down. I presume you thought it wasn't enough. I was looking really for 300 plus. OK. It is coming up in a moment with a 250 to 350 estimation, but the reserve is £300. Now, I think it's a close run thing, but it should make that kind of money. Are you confident? Reasonably. OK. Uh, but I wouldn't be unhappy to take it home. So. OK, here we go. We've got four bids on commission. Starts with me at £250. £260 do I see? £260 now at £250. Come on. £260 do I see? At £250. All done then. At £250. That remains with me. OK. It got up to about £250. Are you unhappy? No, I'm, I'm OK with that. I'm happy to take the box home, David. On the day... The real deal, or the best offer, was with Helen Gardner, £260. The wee Helen, that was the real deal. Back to the den, where Joe's in a feisty mood. Hello, you're Eric, I believe. I am, yes. I'm Joe. Hello. This is your watch. Yes. Does it go? It does, it works, yes. Have you had it long? I've had it uh, probably 10, 12 years. It was passed on to me by a, a family friend and uh, he worked for the railways. I was going to say, was he a railway? Uh, I, I don't know whether it was a retirement gift or whatever, but he passed it on to me some 10 or 12 years ago and it's been stuck in a drawer ever since. It's um, silver plated on nickel, inscribed LNER, London North East Railways. That's probably its issue number. It's got some damage to the enamel face. It's probably about the most boring thing I've seen for a while. Sorry. <laughs> so you want money for it? Oh, yes. You sure? <laughs> yes. Um, how much am I... It looks enough there. Yeah. Dream on. 20 quid? No way. 30 quid? No. How much do you want for it, really? Well, as much as I can get, really. Oh, yeah, I know. Come on, let's be realistic. You're not going to get three million quid for it, are you? No. So how much do you really want for it? In Back down here on planet Earth. I think um, I would uh, go away with 50. I don't know if I want it in my life. I like the blue steel pointers. That's about the only... And it goes. Mm -hmm. And you're a very nice chap, and I love the colour of your sweater. <laughs> <laughs> but 30 quid is my offer. No, well, I'm not prepared to let it go for 30 pounds. And I'm not prepared to pay more than £30 for it because I don't really want it. Are you going to have a day trip to the auction? Yeah, uh, I prob probably will, yes. You probably will do better. It's just you can see that I'm not enthusiastic... No. <laughs> ..about your watch. But thank you very much for bringing it in. Okay, Good then. luck. Thank you very much. So the watch wasn't for Joe, but auctioneer Stephen Iredale is more hopeful. I really like this little railway watch. It's not an exciting piece of horology, it's not a fine movement, or it's not even made of a precious metal, but it is a railway watch. So that opens up the door to an entirely different area of collecting. Anyone who's interested in railways and the history of trains and things like that. Eric and his jumper can't make the auction, so David's looking after his interests. Now, on the dealer's day, Eric brought along a nice bit of railway armour. It was a silver-plated railway man's pocket watch. And Joe just offered 30 quid for it, which was not enough. He declined that offer and said, I'm going to gamble. Is it going to make more? Well, let's find out. There is a reserve of 50 quid. It's coming up now. And 50 pounds is bid, five do I see. At 50 pounds and five now. At 50 pounds and five, 55 bid. At 55, 60 here and five. At 60 pounds and five on the net. At 65 you get... At 65, tick-tock. At 65, selling. 
I'm 65, yeah. 70 in the road. 75. There's always people for this railway on. Five, 80. At 80 pounds, I'm big. in the room. Out on the net. At 80 pounds and five now. At 80 pounds. 80 pounds. The gamble's gone down at 80 pounds. A quick calculation. Close to 66 pounds to come back. Eric's going to be pleased. We'll be sending that off to Eric shortly. That was the real deal. You can put that into the knitwear fund, Derek. Coming up. Joy's going on the charm offensive. How about £20 for a bottle of champagne for my dinner since I've given you a lovely smile? I'd love that. Thank you very much indeed. I don't mean um, for you, I mean for me. Find out who'll be celebrating after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's the last deal of a busy day and David's liking what he's seeing. Nice, I mean, four sovereigns and a half sovereign. Be very pleased to buy those. Always can sell them quite quickly. Providing gold prices don't change, have to watch that. But yeah, like to buy them. But is Joy going to drive a hard bargain? I'm hoping to get rather a lot of money for them to pay for another cruise to the Galapagos. Wow, let's hope David's bought plenty of money with him then. So Joy, you bought me in the family gold? No, they're mine. They're yours? You bought them? No. Uh, Two I've had for 50 years. They were wrapped up in my engagement ring box. All right. One and a half were given to my mother when she was born. My mother's been gone possibly 10 years now. I received two of them then. There were three of us. She had six and they were shared. Oh, how lovely. You seem to have three Edwardian sovereigns, gold sovereigns, an Edwardian half sovereign. And a Victorian. And a Victorian one. Yeah. Well, they're all gold as you know yes so what's made you decide to sell them now didn't really decide until today i brought one in and i was asked have you any more i said oh yes four more at home so you went and got the rest oh how wonderful so you thought sell them and if you get a fair amount of money what would you do with it it would go on another holiday how should we you... try and do a deal how much of you there that might do it Ah, I suppose it might, mightn't it? But it's not going to be as much as... I don't know, it might be, actually, the way I've been spending. There's £100. I mean, these things have a price. One, two, three, four, five. £200. One, two, three, four. It's £300. One, two, three, four. £400. One, two, three, four. £500. One, two, Two, three, four, six hundred pounds. One, two, three, four, seven hundred pounds. Seven hundred and fifty pounds for your four and a half sovereigns. So you're joking. Well, actually, I was quite serious. Will David offer her more? We've got seven hundred and fifty pounds there. One, two, three, four, five. Eight hundred and fifty pounds. At this point, you're going to shake my... No, you're not, because David's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, David. Now, this is very serious, because we have a young senior citizen here. And my job, in particular, David, is to look after senior citizens. That means you should be looking after me. Well, and me as well. <laughs> Did you think about that? We're all senior citizens here. OK. They scrap. £1,017 is what they are worth today. The offer on the table is a sound, good offer. I'm going to say to you, David, if you put another £50 on making 900 it would leave £100, 100 and just a few pounds over. 117 uh, It would leave Profit. 117 That's good I'm only profit. saying this because we have a senior citizen here. I don't want to push you too hard, because I know you've got to make a living. Gold has emotions and vagaries. It goes up and down. It does. At the moment, it's slightly dropping, and I'm nervous because over the next 24 hours, 48 hours, before I can do anything with these, it could drop some more. That allows me a chance of making a very small profit on an £850 investment. 850 is leaving a profit of 150 quid for our dealer. Otherwise, we gamble and we go to auction, but I'm not so sure we can do any better. So I will leave it in your hands. How about £20 for a bottle of champagne for my dinner since I've given you a lovely smile? I'd love that. Thank you very much indeed. I don't mean um, for you, I mean for me. 
Oh. So put two blue ones back there and we'll... Sorry, Joy, I'll put the 20 pounds back then. And another this one. This is your bottle of champagne. No, no, it isn't. Your, my bottle of champagne is in there at the bottom. You're a very nice lady. My offer for your coins is 850 pounds. Yes. And not a penny more, lovely as you are. I'm asking you for that. I'm asking you for 20 pounds for a bottle of champagne on top. Just because my name is Joy, I've given you a lovely smile. You have? I'm quite enjoying this because I've waited <laughs> five years for someone to get the better of... Hello, dear lady. He, <laughs> I'm afraid you've got his measure. You've got him. You've got him on the ropes. Takes one to know one. Ah, that's what it is. 20 quid. 20 quid. Stick another Please, 20 in, go Dave. On. Go on. Do, you know you want to. <laughs> get the better of it, Dave. Get the 20 in. It's just a ma become a matter of principle now. Eight hundred and fifty pounds. And twenty for my bottle of champagne. No, David. No, I'm not buying you a bottle of champagne. I'm giving you eight hundred and fifty pounds for your coins. My heart bleeds. I'll shake your hand, and I hope your champagne chokes you. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at me quite sternly. <laughs> Good fun, Joy. Thank you. Hopefully there's still a margin in it, but gold can fall as well as raise, you know, and who knows? On David's part, it went well. For me, not so well. I don't lose many. He's a hard man. Well done, Joy, but will David have something to celebrate too? <laughs> Let's see if our dealers have made a good profit on their items today. The girls did well. Helen paid £80 for this Moorcroft pot. This is going to cost me money, isn't it, Don? <laughs> it looks like it. Well done. But it was a worthwhile investment. Helen sold it to a private collector for £100. Curiosity led Joe to this box. I actually can't wait to get home with it to find out a bit more about it. It's but so Joe didn't have time to find out. It was instantly snapped up by a keen buyer at an antiques fair in Worcestershire a few days later. If I love it... Someone else will. And they did. Alison sold this Victorian heater for £140 to a private buyer, making her a glowing £50 profit. So I think we need to find you a good home, a friendly, happy home. And that's just where Ted ended up. He turned out to be a 1960s Chilton bear, and Alison won't let him go. So how did David get on with all those sovereigns? <laughs> so, Joy, you bought me in the family gold. No, they're mine. Despite being given a run for his money by Joy, he sold the sovereigns to trade for £975. So, can Joy have that bottle of fizz now? No, I'm not buying you a bottle of champagne. I'm giving you £850 for your coins. Oh, David. We've had a great day here in the sale room. Bags of action, lots of buying, lots of selling. I always like to see that. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.